Doug Velasquez here from Now Spinning Magazine, and this is another update looking at CD sales. I'm based in the UK, and the data I'm going to share with you is UK based, but I think it's very interesting. I'm going to mention some artists that some of you may not be fans of, but I'm doing this because I um, have a genuine interest in, in the music business and statistics, and that was used to be my background, so I find this stuff fascinating. Equally, some of the artists I'm going to mention, I see as part of the streaming and a little bit vinyl generation, the way that the music business is trying to push fans of these artists towards the form that they want to support. And obviously that is streaming and vinyl. But what I'm going to show you shows that the CD sales are still in the middle of a revival, which is now being recognised um, by publications like Music Week in the UK. So I'm going to share my screen and dive in so you can have a look and see what I can see. So this is the Now Spinning website and this is a post that's going live and you can see what, what I'm saying here. So recent releases by people like ABBA, which I've mentioned on this channel before, and um, a lot of people found that really interesting, and Adele, and, I and this is very interesting, and Ed Sheeran, are driving a revival in CD sales. Now, as I said before, before you sort of switch off and say that's not my kind of thing, in a way it is. As rock fans, as many of you are here, you buy and love to buy CDs and vinyl albums, and you feel as if sometimes we are kind of like being... A niche. We are a niche interest, but are we? And that's what I wanted to put across. Now, PR companies, record companies, you know, get all the headlines saying vinyl sales are going into outer space as the CD numbers continue to fall. But they're not. Um, in quarter four, CD sales have seen a year on year increase of about 15 percent and total sales uh, from week 48 up until recently between 2020 and 2021 are up. Now, as I said, it's been driven by three acts, but let's look at this because I think this is really interesting and also interesting the way that the the media still cannot let go of the idea that CDs are not a, a finished format, that no one collects them. You know, this is just not true. It says research by Music Week points out that the first four weeks of quarter four CD sales were down by 5% at the same time this year. They go on to add, this is still a respectable result for a declining format. Why do they need to add that? You know, that CDs have all this negative press that there's no CD players in cars. You buy a, a computer or a Mac and it doesn't have a CD drive anymore. You go into music shops and they don't stock CDs because no one is interested. Well, this is just not true. Because in week 44, there was year-on-year -year increase in CD volumes in every one of the following five chart weeks. So as a result, CD sales for the five-week period, that's week 44 to 48, increased by 25.6%. But it gets more. The first game-changing release was Ed Sheeran's new album, with sales of 139,000. OK, so when you say 139,000 album sales, that's streaming, vinyl, and whatever else. OK, now streaming is the majority. And that included 78,263 CDs. And with ABBA, we know that that opened with 203, well, no, let's say 204,000 physical albums, 27% of the overall market for that week. And that was the headline, remember, where they said it was the fastest selling vinyl album this century? Great clickbait, is it not? Um, but the fact is, the biggest selling vinyl album of this century was 29,891 vinyl albums sold. But CD sales were 148,471. And that hardly got a mention apart from now spinning magazine channel really where we really push that so cd sales increased that week by 29.9 percent year on year to 395,000. and the top five out the top five albums combined cd sales were 277.2 percent higher than the top five volumes for cd in the week for 2020 in the same period which is amazing 
Taylor Swift sold 46,000 CDs, Little Mix 16,000, Rod Stewart 18,000 and Adele a whopping 159,000 CDs were sold that week. So CDs went to 520,000, half a million year on year increase of 41.3%. So in week 47, CD sales were 158,000. 158% higher than the volumes in 2020 for the same week. And in the second week of release, Adele sold another 102,000 albums in the UK. And get this, as I put here, 71,000 of them were again on CD. So as the mainstream music business tries to steer everyone towards vinyl and streaming, I think everyone would agree that downloads are finished, really. The CD was refusing to listen, as are the fans that love this format. Cherry Red Records, who, um, who are a great label, are doing absolutely brilliant guns with their, their little box sets and their releases and esoteric recordings. You know, they're doing better than they've ever done. And I have a contact who runs a CD pressing plant, and he's never been busier than he is at this point. So he's busier now than he was in the golden age of CDs from what he's telling me. Now, the other factor that I want to mention that could be driving this is vinyl prices. I don't think it's to do with the fact you might have to wait six months for your for the album to come out on vinyl because you can buy the CD in advance. I know there's a there's a backlog of, of, of vinyl albums being stuck. I think the price structure of vinyl at the moment doesn't make any sense at all. Now, I am from the golden age of records. Um, I grew up with them. So in the 70s, a single album was £2.25 and a double album was £3.25. In the late 70s and the 80s, a single album was about £5.99, £8.99 and a double album was £10.99. Now that was roughly the same. So whether it was on Polydor, A&M, Warner Brothers, um, EMI, Vertigo, whoever it was, the prices were the same. You didn't think, oh, My favourite band's got an album coming out next week, but it's on Blah Blah label and it's going to be almost double the price if it was on a different label. But this is what seems to be happening now. For instance, I went to HMV Records yesterday and the Adele album is £30 or £32 sometimes online. The CD is £10.99. So that's three times the price for the vinyl record. Now, for the demographic that that is aimed at, I could buy the record for, sorry, buy the CD for £11, and then I've still got £20 to go out with my mates for a coffee or even go out for a drink later on. These things are are factors. You know, HMV are doing their best, but, you know, two albums, £40. That's still... £40, just an impulse buy, nearly half a hundred. And then there's the prices of things. I could buy Jethro Tull's um, latest remix of A Passion Play for £17.99. Or I could buy uh, a a Bruce Springsteen triple album for £29.99. But then Deep Purple's Man in Japan is £40. A Beatles double album was £50. Um, the price, you just pick up the vinyl and the prices are all over the place. But it seems to me that the price of a single album is heading towards 30 to 35 pounds and a double album is heading towards 40 to 45 pounds plus. And that makes it a luxury item. And the fact is that people like to collect and have the special editions, the signed copies. Um, I know that Taylor Swift has, for her CDs, you can buy the signed copies. You can buy signed copies of a lot of things. And people are going to want the physical product, and they do. They want the the, the artwork, and they want the, the words. I think this is where we're seeing CDs coming back. And this is all without anyone pushing them. If you think about it, the, the industry couldn't have made it more difficult to pu- they're not pushing CDs. They're like an afterthought. It, um, my recent video on the Doobie Brothers, Liberté, it was so hard to find that. I had to get it on import from America. Um, it's as if they're just trying to make it as difficult as possible, but fans want them. 
So, you know, this is this is the point that I, you know, I wanted to make really is that CD sales in the UK are in the middle of a revival. Now, some of the most popular pop acts are driving some of that. But underneath it all, the undertow of rock fans, collectors, music fans who just, you know, want to, you know, to, to have stuff behind them on a shelf and to hold it and to listen to it. They are, they've never gone away. So I just thought that was interesting. I just wanted to share it with you. So it's all looking pretty good to me. So let me know what you think and whichever part of the world you're in. I know that many people are on the YouTube channel are from the whole world. What are your thoughts? Are you, I mean, I collect, as you can see, I collect records and CDs, but what are your thoughts on vinyl prices, CD availability, and what are your thoughts on this? Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being part of the Now Spinning Magazine journey, and I shall see you on my next video. Thank you.